What's up, baseball fans, and what's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started talking about the MLB's PA latest proposal on Sunday, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys, so we are going to go over the MLB PA main issues in their proposal and what they put in their proposal on Sunday and why from the MLB spokesperson saying they are deadlocked when it comes to negotiations and when is the next meeting. So what I want to talk about first before I get into the MLB PA proposal is that we thought coming back to New York and we heard the word flexibility when it comes to the 14 team playoff with regards to the union and the CBT with regards to the owners. Both sides were talking about flexibility on those ends. And of course, with the reporters who are the puppets for the owners and some other reporters who are the puppets for the union, both put it out there that they were flexible on their main issues. And then yesterday, we seen that in an hour and a half meeting, which is a joke, they didn't speak about the main core problems that is holding up these negotiations to get a deal done. And we were going to go over the MLBPA's proposal and tell you why, in my opinion, it is a garbage proposal, which the players' union have been sending to the owners ever since the lockout. Every proposal has been complete garbage. And everybody talks about the owners not negotiating in good faith. Every proposal the players union has given to the owners have been a garbage proposal to not move the needle anywhere near the middle where you expect to get a deal done. So what was the MLBPA's proposal on Sunday? We'll look at it right here, guys. With regards to the CBT, which, by the way, they did not speak about yesterday in their hour and a half meeting, the union remains the same at $230 million starting in 2022. And a $6 million increase over the next five years is what the players' union is proposing. They did, however, lower their asking percentage of the pre op pool to $80 million dollars which was in the last offer with the players, $85 million. They also stayed pat on their minimum salary of $725,000 for the one to three year players with the option for the team to offer more, which let's be honest guys, that is a useless part of the proposal because no team is probably gonna offer them more because the player is still on the contract no matter what. So $725,000 they're asking for the minimum on year one in 2022. They also offered to have a 45 day notice of any rule change that has to be in place and notified before any rule can be changed. And the rules that were put into these in this proposal was larger bases, shift restrictions, and there it's a no on robo umps according to the union. So those are the main rules that the owners want to look at and change, but the, the union wants a 45 day notice to get to be aware of this rule change so they can either approve it or not. No rules are approved unless you get both sides agreeing to the new rule. And specifically, larger bases and shift restrictions, along with no robo umps. The union doesn't want robo umps. But when it comes to shift restrictions, I want to key in, key in on that because shift restrictions is not banning the shift. The owners want to ban the shift. The union does not want to ban the shift. They want shift restrictions. What I look at when it comes to shift restrictions is this. You're probably going to have to have two infielders on either side of second base. And the other restriction is probably no infielder can be on touching, having their feet on the outfield grass. That's what I assume the shift restrictions means. But 
there's always some fine print to that that we don't know about. And lastly, the MLBPA stood pat on the 12-team playoffs. They did not even talk about the 14-team playoff. So when you look at this MLBPA proposal that was given to the owners on Sunday, two things stick out that they were supposedly flexible about. The CBT, which the union wants at 238, and the 12-team playoff. They were both supposed to be flexible according to the reports that we heard on Saturday. That they were flexible. That's why they were meeting on Sunday. Because flexibility was supposed to be the main thing that was supposed to jumpstart the negotiations on Sunday. What happened? The CBT and the, 12, and the, the amount of teams in the playoffs wasn't even discussed because there was nobody even talking about that knowing that nobody was going to budge. The pre-op pool lowering it $5 million is chump change. That is just useless. The minimum salary, not budging on that. When they saw the owners going up to $700,000 with incremental increases of $10 million over the next five years, that would bring it up to $750,000. With that minimum salary that the union wants of seven twenty five dollars would stay the same for five years. So, yes, that is an increase of $150,000 on the minimum salary as of right now. But it doesn't change over five years. At least with the owner's minimum increase, it goes up every year. So at year three of the minimum salary, it's already more than what the union proposes of $725,000. I don't even want to look at the option of the team offering more because there's no incentive for the team to offer more to a minimum uh, a one to three year player because they are still under contract. There is no negotiating. So that. Part of the minimum salary or ask is ridiculous. The bigger problem is here, guys, and this is what I want to tell you guys. These MLB PA proposals have been garbage from the very start, and you can say, "Of course they are." Why? Why would they try to push the needle a little bit towards the middle of what the owners are asking? But let's be honest, guys. The MLB PA is trying to win these negotiations. But you're not going anywhere if you keep on bringing proposals that, one, you lied about saying that you were flexible in certain areas that the owners wanted and then giving a proposal the exact opposite of what you said. When you notice the owners have been going closer and closer to the players, but at some point the owners are only going to go so far. It's up to the players' side to get a little bit more closer to the middle where a deal can get done. Because nobody is hurt more than the players in this situation if they don't play games. They already lost two series. They're probably going to lose about two more. The players have to come more towards the middle or this deal is never going to get done. This proposal was an absolute waste of time. And getting people excited on Saturday that they were going to jumpstart talks because they were flexible in their asking of the major issues wasn't even put up on the table. So what are the players doing? At least when you see the owner's proposals, they kept on raising things. They raised the minimum salary. They got rid of the draft pick compensation. The draft lottery, they put five teams. The union wants six. The owners also were offering increases in the CBT from twenty to, from two hundred and twenty million all the way up to two hundred thirty eight million over the five years. But the two hundred twenty million is already six million dollars more than the current CBT. Now it's not a lot. The CBT is a big sticking point for the owners, but they did increase it. Everything that they asked for, that they that they proposed in every proposal the owners gave to the players, everything was an increase. On the player side, everything wasn't barely anything was a decrease except for the pre arbitration pool. That's a problem. Why would the owners work to get closer to the players when the players are not even trying these proposals? 
why I call them a garbage proposal. That is the biggest problem with Tony Clark, who I believe is doing everything he can to not lose his job, but not everything he can to make a deal. Tony Clark, in the last CBA, got wiped all over the floor, and he made it his mission to do everything he can, which, granted, is what the players, for the most part, want. But why would the players go back to the table if they keep on sending back garbage proposals? Tony Clark is looking to save his job. Tony Clark is not make is not trying to make a fair deal for both sides because he's going to lose his job. If the players don't get everything they want, which is nearly impossible in one CBA, which in my opinion, this C any CBA that is signed at this moment is going to be a win for the players. Just because they're not getting everything they want is bad negotiating tactics. And Tony Clark is doing a bad job on this. And if nobody realizes that, you're not paying attention to the MLBPA proposals because they all have been garbage. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Let me know in the comments what side are you on. Are you on the owner's side or are you on the player side? Or you're just so fed up that you don't care anymore. They're both greedy. They're both not speaking in good faith, which I tend to differ. Let me know in the comments what you think of the latest proposal on Sunday by the players. And you are you think they are negotiating and giving proposals in good faith? Because I don't think the players' union is. I really appreciate all the support. And as always, Mets fans, let's go Mets.